Okay, welcome back. Uh, last week and the week before, we were showing you how we remove things from the middle in order to create width and depth. I've got uh, four more little techniques for you today, and that, that'll be 12 total. If you can't widen something, or if you can't clear the middle out with one of these 12, um, there's other shows on the network you might want to check out. Um, no, I'm not going to say that. Anyway, I love my audience. Um, the guitar we were working with last week, uh, th th this one right here, it's a mono guitar. Okay, now what I've done is I've duplicated it. So this is the same guitar. Right? Okay, let's, let's get them equal level. Okay, now let's pan one left and one right. Dave, it sounds the same. All right, hold on, hold on. Check this out. Okay. Now, on this little bad boy, we're going to take off and roll off everything below 680. Now, on this bad boy, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to roll off everything below around 700. Okay, now watch what that does together. Without it. With it. Uh-huh. Pretty cool. And, and experiment with this. Oh, I like that right there. What's that? It's about where I was before. But move these, move these around. Move this one around, move this around. And, uh, and here again, you're going to want to combine this with other techniques. You might combine this with center. You might combine this with um, isotope or whatever. It's not an either or. You can try different techniques. And because I'm showing pianos, guitar strings, and synths, that doesn't mean this, this technique is only for guitars. It's a darn good one for guitars, as you can see. But it can be for it can, you can use it for anything, and this is going to help us have options in terms of what we put in the middle. Remember, there's three sacred spots in the mix. The most sacred spot is the middle, and then the other two are the, the left and right, hard left and right. Now you 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 can do a pretty doggone good mix with a switch that just selects whether you want something in the middle, on the left, or on the right. The area in between. Uh, it is, is a little hard to hear, but if you use some of these techniques that we're, that we're showing you now, they can also be used to pan. It's not just to clear out the middle, but the Haas effect can be used to place stuff microscopically, incrementally. And I painted myself in a corner with that sentence, but anyway, you guys are smarter than I am. You can figure that out. Okay, so, so now we're going to go to... Um, um, uh, a direct, uh, I've talked about the house effect for a while. Now we're going to go to uh, um, an exact 100% uh, example of the house effect. Okay, here's our two, here's our, our, our two mono versions of the same guitar. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this delay. Now, the Haas effect, uh, don't hold me to these numbers, you guys. Sometimes you put my feet to the fire, and I'm not that bright to be, uh, to be like uh, looking for little tiny details. But in my mind, I tend to think of the Haas effect as anywhere from a, a microsecond or a millisecond or two up to about 30, 35, somewhere in there. Some definitions take it up to 50. And the concept behind that is that uh, if you've got something coming out of both speakers at the same volume, then your ear interprets that as coming out from the middle. And it's not coming out from the middle. It's coming out from this speaker and this speaker. But there's the perception that it's coming out the middle. 
So panning is nothing more than the amount of volume, volume you send to each speaker. Think about that because that's critical to, to some of the things we're going to do down the road. So what we're going to do is the ear, according to Mr. Haas, can discern We'll read that because I don't want to butcher the definition, but basically what we're doing, we're, we're implementing the concept that something still is perceived as coming from the middle, even though we're delaying one side, and that, that, that gives it a widening effect. Watch this. Did you hear that without it? with it. Now let's, let's, let's make it less. It's still sounding like almost one source until we get up. Now that's clearly a delay. But if you, if you look at these numbers down in here, it still sounds like it's coming from the middle, but watch this. Dave, what about mono? Nothing went away. That's the beauty of the Haas effect. Now, if I was a TV director, would I worry about black and white? No. If you got a black and white TV, you shouldn't be watching my TV show. I think we're at the point now where I can declare on this week's ITL of Pensada's Place... Mono is dead. Okay, tell all your friends, Mono's dead. Don't worry about Mono. Now, there are uses for, for checking things in Mono. We'll, we'll, we'll do something about that. But for all practical purposes, would you rather sell less records and please the three guys that still listen to Mono or sell more records? Everybody's listening to headphones now, and you're still working in Mono? Come on, man. Get with the program. All right. Now, uh, earlier in an earlier episode or show, I told you that sometimes stereo is not stereo. This particular string track happens to be fairly stereo, so I, I didn't pick the best source for an example, but this is still pretty dramatic. A lot of times your stereo synth part is actually just a mono that's just chorus to one side. So let's check out this synth part, string part. Okay, fairly stereo, not too bad. All right, now let's do this. I'm gonna pan this a little bit this way. Okay, now I'm going to send it to this delay. Study these. These are, pretty, these are pretty interesting numbers. They're not random. Okay. Now we've really got a nice, nice clear out in the middle, and we're more stereo than before. Go back and check the before, and then and then come back and check this. You know what? I can do it for you real quick here. Are you ready? All right. Okay, one last one. So hang with me now. All right, guys. This one is... A little subtle, and to be honest with you, I wanted to have four things in this episode, so I'm, I'm stretching it on this one. <laughs> so if you call me on it, you're right. But I, I, do, I do use this, and um, there's some, there's some big-time engineers that I hear are using this technique. They might, they might implement it with a couple of PCM42s or something like that. I, I happen to like this setting. Um, so here we go. This is, this is my stereo guitar. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift one side 40 41 samples not very much okay now I'm gonna bring in echo boy turn this up a little bit guys
Well, you can see, I'm, I don't want to take time to adjust the volumes exactly, but you hear what it's doing. 41 samples, you might use. Um, now, this will give you some, some, some mono compatibility issues because uh, it's very tight. So uh, those of you that, that understand that there's 41,000 samples happening per second, 41 samples, you can do the math, send it to me in an email and tell me how, how much time it is. It's pretty short. But um, check, this, check this setting out, a 30-second note, a 16th note, our beats, 120 beats per minute, and there you go. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with me. Uh, I had a lot of fun explaining this stuff to you, sharing it with you. And, the, and then uh, in, in coming weeks, we're going to start using these techniques to, to, to help expand our mixes and widen our mixes and allow us to create that perception that you can kind of reach in the mix and pick out things because now we've got techniques to clear out the middle but at the same time expand the sides. Thanks.